Anna Kasparian appeared on the Adam and Sitch podcast for a two-hour conversation that is being described and branded as her Why I Left the Left moment. So we have some pieces of material that we are going to play here, a few different clips uh, from the interview that we'll get to. Uh, what I will say at the outset, my thesis here is that much of what she says in the interview, I did not think was particularly unreasonable. However, I do think that Anna and Jenk uh, have really uh, made their bet when it comes to this uh, situation. They are reaping what they have sown. They are reaping what they have sown. They have engaged in a lot of the cheap and dismissive and reductive discourse that now Anna is falling victim to herself. And she acts like, where did this come from? Well, what do you mean, where did this come from? You guys have cultivated this. Now, to Anna's credit, she does do a mea culpa on certain issues, the Rittenhouse issue being one of them. You know, um, she was absolutely demagoguing against people who were saying, hey, what's being reported about this Rittenhouse case in the media is biased, a lot of it is just blatantly false. There are a lot of lies by omission in this case. You had to look far and wide to even find out that Rittenhouse's victims were white. I mean, they played fast and loose with that. They made a very, very specific uh, not to mention that in many, many articles that were written, many of the right. TV right. Uh, reports. And uh, there's no doubt that TYT... Um, was all about reducing everyone who was saying, hey, wait a minute, um, laws being what they are, because look, I think Kyle Rittenhouse is a little punk, obviously, um, but laws being what they are, um, there was absolutely no way to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he should have been locked up for decades of his life. You have to be able to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt to render a guilty verdict. And if I wrote the laws in this country, the very act of bringing a weapon like that into a situation like that would establish violent intent. You could not pass right. that point, claim self-defense. You bring a weapon like that into that situation, we are considering that an incitement and an escalatory act. But that's those are not the laws on the books in Wisconsin. And so given that, he was absolutely overcharged. And there was absolutely no way to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he was guilty of what the state charged him with. She realized that after the fact, but let's not pretend that she wasn't part of creating this just completely irrational, delusional, knee-jerk, reductive atmosphere that she's now on the receiving end of, right? And right. she's now having to, you know, deal with the consequences of having cultivated an audience of simplistic, incurious, sort of left-adjacent libs who don't have the critical analysis of anything that she's sort of trying to verse herself in right now. All right, well, so that's, well, that's the well, broad take, I, and then we'll get into the videos in a minute. It's interesting that you say that because a uh, friend of show, at least insofar as he used a clip of us with Savvy once, uh, Greg Foreman, who's channeled the black conservative, <laughs> I always say is the he is the hardest working man on YouTube because I swear to God, before anyone knows it's trending, that motherfucker has a 20 minute video about it. It is unbelievable. Um, but he's been following the Anna conversion story for a while. He's been very on that. And his framing has been, I think, correct that she's realizing what a lot of what she advocates for implies for a white woman like her. And she doesn't like it. Now that a lot of these things that she's advocated for are impacting her, now she's whistling a different tune. Now that they're coming for her, <laughs> now she has. So he's he's been all over that. Like every time she's had one of these things that have gotten her attacked, um, he said, well, you know, you liked it before. And now all of a sudden these people are coming for you. Now you don't like it so much. And 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 yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of truth to that now that she's becoming a victim of the lynch mob that she helped to create um, more and more. She's speaking out against it. So is there it, it, it I, like I think she's being sincere, but at the same time, it wasn't until her own interests were threatened by what she had created that she started to realize that she created a monster. 
Right. She was very happy to smear Aaron Mate as an Asadist, right? right? right. She was very right. happy to attack Jimmy Dore over the Rittenhouse right. stuff when that right. was all going down. Right. And, you know, those are just two names that come to mind immediately. But, the, you know, the list goes on. We know we've covered TYT quite a bit on this show, right? Um, but anyway, let's get to some of these video clips because there are a few that we got to play here. So the first one is just a sort of broad diagnosis of the left's uh, unwillingness to engage honestly in honest conversation when they have honest disagreements with some more uh, right wing thinkers. Let's hear this. What I see happening right now is I want the left to engage in the argument as opposed to what I see happening, which is them engaging in like ad hominem in a lot, in a lot of cases, uh, character assassination or care like statements about the individual's character based on their preconceived notions and based on what they heard other streamers say about the individual. It's like, okay, just take a step back for a second. You need to address the point that this person is making. And if you're not addressing the point that this person is making, and instead you're turning around and, and throwing all sorts of like accusations at them to make them seem like they're immoral or they're bad people, then that tells me that you don't really have an answer to what they're saying, you know? And I, I see that happening more when it comes to culture war related issues as opposed to economic issues. And that's the other thing. I mean, I think that the left has completely, and they'll, they'll deny this, but I mean, just go to Twitter right now. They've like abandoned economic policies and instead mm -hmm. hyper-focused on incredibly divisive, like I, I de identity related issues, right? Yeah. And right. yeah. And, and like their take is always, oh, well the other side wants us just be, they're racist, that's why. They're yeah. transphobic, that's why. And it's like, no, you gotta do more than that. So if you're going to, you know, if you're going to refute what they're saying, then actually address the points they're making. And if you're not going to do that, you're going to come out looking incredibly weak and childish. All right. So, you know, once again, this is in keeping with my overall take. Like, I don't really have an issue with anything she said there. On the other hand, that is a result of instructing people to vote for Democrats year after year, despite voicing your objections to them on these economic policy grounds. Like, yeah, how do you think the left became obsessed with identity politics issues? Because that's the beat that the Democrats have been on since 2016 when they insisted there would be no real economic platform within the party. So as long as you funnel support into that organization, of course, those things are going to become dominant. And TYT has been a guilty party, in my view, of doing that. That's number one. Now, number two, where I think she does have a reasonable point to make is that there is a denialism on the left of certain problems. Now, again, I, you know, Jenk came out and said he was voting for Rick Caruso for mayor of L.A. I don't believe Anna ever came out and said that explicitly, but I know she shared a couple of posts of his and sort of promoted him, you know, subtly at times. So it's, it's possible, if not likely, that she did herself. And if she's on the record saying she didn't, I will retract that, obviously. But from what I could tell, it seems she probably did. So that's a disagreement that I would share with Anna for sure is how okay once you once you acknowledge a certain set of information at that point it is the job of the left to go out and win the argument so where she's correct to say is that like the left doesn't have to deny that there's an uptick in crime or that crime is making cities unsafe or unpleasant right that doesn't have to be a victory for the right in other words you don't have to follow from there to well I'm supporting Caruso uh, because a lot of people on the left would acknowledge that, yes, while crime is a problem, we understand that when you put the Giuliani or the Caruso or the Paul Vallis, in Chicago's case, in charge, all that happens is more cops, more jails, and higher rents for everybody else. These are basically landlord mayors. Um, and so there is a reason to engage and say, okay, we acknowledge crime is on the rise. We acknowledge crime is a problem. But we are going to approach this from a more progressive point of view. That is what the people of Chicago just did. And this is not to sing the praises of Brandon Johnson. I don't really have much faith in him. But he was the progressive alternative to Paul Vallis. So the people of Chicago did not deny the existence of crime or the problem of crime. 63% of people in uh, that city admitted that they felt unsafe on the street. Yet they voted for the progressive over the right wing candidate. So there's an insecurity among so much of the left. And that's what she's really getting at there. 
That's what she's getting at there. There's this real insecurity that if we acknowledge the facts of the case, it means we cannot win the argument. That insecurity is born of a shallow political analysis. And my main critique of Anna and Jenk these past few years is that they have uh, fostered that shallow political critique. Right. They have not embraced an actual left alternative to the status quo. They have towed the line between progressive rebels and then when it counts right. before Election Day, loyal Democrats. So what you have are a bunch of very confused people who don't really have an actual critique of the system. And so that makes them very confused when you go in this other direction. Well, now you're just denying reality. Right. If you don't admit that you know crime is a problem or that there are excesses of the trans movement and things like that right well yeah sure they are sure they are but you taught them to do that right, right? i mean this is part of how you got here and i do think her awakening here is sincere i don't think she's grifting i mean she's putting herself in a very precarious spot here she doesn't know what tomorrow right. brings there's not there's no right she's too far left for the daily wire they're not going to take her yeah. right um, I, mean, I mean they they would if she went full in that direction but, but she's, she's not, not going to because going she's to. she's she's got more brains than that like yeah. dave rubin is a fucking empty-headed moron right, right you know he always was and so well, yeah and he'll also, just do whatever like, so, like it, yeah like i think it's sincere so she's just not gonna that she's not suddenly gonna have a uh you know uh on the road to damascus revelation and then start grifting right like this is in right. her mind getting away from what she would perceive as a griff now that she's had this realization. It is funny, and we'll get into it a little bit tonight and more on Friday. In many ways, all these people attacking them are their children. This is their children. This is their children going after mom and dad, right? Chenk and Anna birthed all these channels. The Humanist Report, uh, Majority Report, uh, D David Dole. I mean, a lot of them were in partnership with the Young Turks. Uh, Humanist Report, he just yeah, they were on their network, left yeah. their network, and I don't know if that ever got resolved because he wasn't able to re-monetize himself. He did. He did After get After he resolved, left, so he, he was did get a result. That's yeah. why he's not ranting about it anymore. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> he stopped having a nervous breakdown on there. Um, so this is really mom and dad moving away from, and this is, I think what you're getting at. They raised them to think the way they think they raised them to be these knee jerk, uh, you know, uh, have this very oversimplified perspective to boil everything down to the magas and transphobes you that's how you raise them it's of course like the old, it's like the old drug ad i learned it from watching you, <laughs> you know? well they raise them to feel like anyone who bucks the party line is doing it because they're grifting and drifting to the right well, way well, how that, many well, hit pieces too. did they run against jimmy for 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 taking right. positions right. on things that didn't fit the party right. line. Right. Right. And right. so now they, she they takes they a position that doesn't fit the party line. Of course, they're going to come for her. Right. They created this environment of absolute conformity. And right. Shank, look, with her, and this is the woman, and again, we'll get more into this Friday. This is the woman who went on there and said, I'm better than you. Right. Now, with Shank, I feel I, I never really felt with her that she's just putting on a show. I felt like this is really who she is. Chenk's putting on a show. Like, I've seen Chenk do very intentional um, faking that he lost it for a minute. Like, saying, dropping the F-bomb and then catching himself. Look, man, Chenk's been on the air a long time. He don't drop the F-bomb by accident. He doesn't have moments like that. Right? That's for the drama. God, you fucking monster! Yeah. Come on, man. It's a fucking show. It's a fucking show. So I don't know what Cenk believes, if anything. Um, you know, I mean, he could very well simply be a guy moving from opportunity to opportunity, depending on which way the alternative media space goes. What happens between the two of them now is interesting. That's obviously a very complex, deep, long standing relationship that they have as partners and I'm sure friends at, after all these years. What is he going to do? Because you cannot tell me with their audience that she's not a liability to him now. Because as you say, she's not right wing enough that all of a sudden the the Daily Wire is going to start watching TYT. 
That's not going to happen just because she had this revelation. No, no, no. So, it, it, so it, it, you're go only going to lose audience because of who they've been. Their audience is the core, the heart, the Death Star, so to speak. It is the ultimate concentration of these MSNBC 2.0 people. It's the people who want MSNBC just a little younger, a little more accessible, a little closer to the ground, a little more relatable. That's their audience. That audience, this, this is not, this is not going to play well for them. No, this, oddly enough, this is more the Jimmy Dore audience, which is, yes, they are left wing. They, and they hate issues. her so much, they're not coming over no, there. No, but what even. I'm saying is this is, but they, they drove this wedge between their audience and the Dore audience, right. you know, which is uh, not exactly our audience. But, you know, if we're dividing into schools here, right, like the Harry Potter things, you know, this would be the house of Dore and they'd be the house of TYT, right? The, the top dogs at each yes. camp, right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Um, And so they really intentionally, hey, 1,001 we, we people. Of we got 1,000 people in here. Thank you very much, folks. We had 1,000 earlier, and then some of you dropped off. Look at that. Um, but yeah, we, you know, they Pussies. really created this environment where if you stray from them, it's because you are drifting to the right and you are a bad faith actor, is what they said about Jimmy. It's what they've said about Mate. They've attacked Greenwald for, for yep. this, this very yep. thing, yep. right? And now yep. she's saying, oh, wait a minute. Some of the stuff about Rittenhouse wasn't true. Oh, wait a minute. Puberty blockers uh, can be permanent. Oh, I didn't know that. So let me modify my position on these issues. And as soon as you modify, what happens? The people who you trained to right. identify anyone who modifies as being a right-wing grifter, they all called you a right-wing grifter. Right. Who right. could have seen that one coming? Right. Right? All right. right. So let's go to the second clip here. Um, this is when she describes her reaction to this perceived shift. She calls out... The leftist mafia, we did a segment on the leftist mafia attacking her over the call me a woman gate thing where she put yeah. out a tweet yes. saying, I don't want to be called a birthing person. I want to be yes. called a woman. And they roasted her for it. A lot of people who, as Russell mentioned, were in the T under the TYT umbrella, uh, Dole, uh, Humanist Report. Uh, that may have been all of them. I don't think what's his name. I don't think the toothpaste guy, uh, Lance from the, the surfs. I don't no, think they're no, TYT no, no, affiliated. No. no. Um, but uh, so she calls out the leftist mafia and uh, makes mention of Olaimi Olurin, uh, which we will um, have more to say on in a moment. But here is her explaining the reaction to her sort of, um, you know, leaving the left in certain ways, shall we say. The reaction has not been great. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, that... <laughs> leftist mafia stream was unbelievable to me like the accusations that were thrown out there um olay imp implying that i'm i'm racist because as a woman i don't want to be called a birthing person like that has i mean race didn't come up at all until she brought it up and then she i mean she was the only one on that stream who brought race into it and like made it abundantly clear that she's got an issue with white women and just thinks they're all the same and like you know whatever <laughs> and then and then after i basically called her out on it she's like oh you're attacking me and only me because i'm black and it's like no you're the only one attacking. in that group of people yeah. who attacked me and accused me of being racist because i personally want to be called a woman all right so there you have that. Now, she mentioned Olayami, uh, you know, in the initial reaction to that, and then she brought her up here. So our other friends of the show here uh, over at the uh, Sling Blade meets Boys Don't Cry show, they're the Vanguard. <laughs> uh, they were doing a reaction stream uh, to this interview. I think this was yesterday. It may have been yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday, though. And uh, they talked about the Olay stuff, and Olay was very compelled to call into the show. So here she calls in. She doesn't in. like drama. She doesn't like drama, right. So she calls into the Vanguard show to respond to Anna calling her out a second time. Here's Olay calling in. This is her reaction to what we just heard. Let me explain this to y'all. I don't care for all of this. Like, Anna, let me, let me be fucking clear. 
keep my name out your mouth. The only reason why anybody even mentioned you because I don't even think you matter. I don't even give a fuck about your white centered view in the world. And also because you keep your Armenian, but they keep saying I'm white passing. Whiteness is a construct. Maybe you should read a fucking book before you present like you're the queen of the fucking leftist liberal movement. It's a construct. Am I looking at a white blonde woman? Is that how you walking through the earth? White lady. And oh, now you want to act like, oh, they are the ones that are racist because they assumed when I started uh, peddling propaganda that I was talking about black people. So y'all are the racist and that really what's really bothers me. Girl, get the fuck out of here. You know what the fuck you doing all in news be talking shit, okay? <laughs> you and Jenk are both full of fucking shit and y'all need to hush your fucking mouths because I'm over it. That is what I got to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I, I, I totally I totally feel you, Olay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. We're pulling that as a sound drop. <laughs> I totally feel it. Really. Yeah. I mean, what a fucking we're, lunatic. I'm whenever, sorry. Whenever, what whenever, a lunatic. When, whenever we have like an absurdly white person trying to ingratiate themselves with a black person, we're going to yeah. drop that sound drop. <laughs> I totally feel you. Really. <laughs> I totally get where you're coming from, man. <laughs> I totally get where you're coming from. Holy shit, man. I mean, this right here, what we just played, that last minute, this is what is being purged from the left right now. And that's that's this is a running theme of the entire stream. Like th wh what you just heard there and these dumbasses nodding along. Yeah, no, totally feel you. If you want any left wing progress in your lifetime, you are never getting it as long as your movement is represented by this shit. Ever. Yes. Never, yes. ever, ever. Yes. Keep my name out your mouth. Whiteness is a contract. What do you mean keep? First of all, what do you mean keep her name out of your mouth? You're a public figure. You're in this game. You called into the Vanguard show. They are right. a gossip drama yeah. show. Exactly. I'm sorry. You don't get to tell people keep their keep your name out of their mouth. Right. You make yourself a figure for public consumption. Right. To these Vanguard guys. Nobody credit, asked her to do that. She's no, a lawyer, Nobody asked right? you to do that. Yeah, nobody right. She's a lawyer talking or something about like you. that. She's yeah. Stuck to the law. Right. You, if you don't you want to be talked about, to be on here. then then don't come in and start talking about people, right? I mean, to the Vanguard guys' credit, they're good sports about it. They never say people should not talk about us or not, you know, dunk on us. They, the Lord knows we've done a lot of it, right? Fair is fair, right? So what do you mean keep my name out of your mouth? I mean, I, I don't understand. She said she didn't want to talk about Anna, but the leftist mafia kept going on. And after a while, she just had to chime in that they were going easy on her because she's white. Which, right. first of all, yeah. what an idiotic take. They're going easy on her because they're her protégés. They're, they're TYT affiliated channels. And they channels. started out on her channel. <laughs> right. Is that right. And actually, a humanist report was still under their channel. At the time, at yeah. At that time. And Dole was part of TYT, too, I believe. It's so, still, yeah. So still, that's he why. Hasn't gone out on okay. Own. He hasn't crossed out of the network yet? No, okay. I don't know. I don't know. They, so they, that's why they were a little bit easy on her the because chat, they're friends with her and, you know, they're uh, involved, you know, right. in some business right. capacity with them. Right? right. It's not because she's a white lady. I mean, we're just, well, what a ridiculous take. What an absurd thing to say and to call in and to just rant like that as if, as if this is making any sense to anybody. You know, and, and this is what I mean. If whiteness is a construct, why are you attacking her as a white lady? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. The, the whole thing. No, it, was the just whole a, thing was just absolutely it, it, psychotic. It was, it was completely batshit. And at one point she says, uh, you know, that she she doesn't like drama. She avoids drama. If you haven't been blocked by her yet, because she's we both are, big, yeah. she's big on the blocking. But if you go and you look at her Twitter, her Twitter is basically that. It is a litany of these people who do this and those people who do that. And these people have to shut the fuck up. And these people are doing this. That's all it is. It's drama. It's drama. It's calling out white people. Uh, what you just saw, that's her Twitter feed. Drama. Nothing but drama. This is not a, this is not a relevant group of people whose opinions you're all of a sudden very offended by. Like most people look at these spaces and they think, who the hell are they and why do we care about them? Uh, the only reason anybody at all cares about them is because of the Young Turks, you know, and now here you are saying, well, how could they have burned me like this? Nobody else gives a shit like they're, they're not important. You shouldn't have been bothered by what they have to say. Who the fuck cares? 
what David Dole or Mike Figueredo or that fucking cartoon shit lib with the eye, the Illuminati who got canceled well, for, she, yeah, she's got I don't canceled know what she did. What? She fucking fucked the roadrunner in the ass or something, or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know. But she, she, like, she who was cares? part of the reason the Elementals movie tank. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, who the hell knows, right? But like, this is just a fake space. It's a fa it's a meaningless space that you have cultivated. And so right. what their opinion of you matters to you? Why? Why? Right? Um, it, it's it's a good point. Um, I think because they're all in the same ecosystem and because I mean, I'm sure she has personal relationships. But that is a, my point. And did, didn't she say that at some point in the interview that, yes. that it was a little surprising to her? to have people that she knew personally that know her come at her now. Yeah, but that that's my point. Like like that, wait, like specifically when she said she wanted to she didn't want to be called a birthing person that she was a little surprised a lot of people she had personal relationships with in the space came at her. Right, but that's my point is that this is an irrelevant ecosystem. Like like this is not a space that is having any influence on anything. In fact, people in this ecosystem are losing they are a liability for the left the left is recognizing that and the left yep. is starting to weed them out finally anna herself is doing that now this is her way of doing that right, right? she's too right. close to the inside of it to do right. it all at once but that's why this is all happening to her that's why she's being dragged like this because she's not in a position i don't think to just make a clean break right because what she got I me mean, she co-hosts the show Right. I mean, this was the godfather of the online left. Right. Um, and so, you know, that to me is one of the ironies of this. Right. I mean, it's just one of these things where it's like, OK, you're you're disavowing the, the very ecosystem that you helped create here. Well, um, in a way, but you're still too close to it to just wash your hands of these fucking people who no one looks to for any thought or influence at all. While I think it's sincere. In some ways, she's having her Oprah moment here because that that was basically Oprah's trajectory. Like, you know, nobody ever calls her out on this now. Oprah created trash TV like Oprah created Jerry Springer before Oprah. The whole like do a panel on lesbian nuns that didn't exist. You're, you're the king of the daytime was Phil Donahue and he did a very, you know, he did a very straight show those shows were very sedate it was for ladies having their coffee in the afternoon he might have on the secretary of state you know it was very very you know or a celebrity or something you know it was a little lighter than evening news she was the one who nobody had ever seen anything like that before right she was the one who opened up the gates to the freak show and right. then once jerry springer caused a backlash that mother i will never forget it she wrote a fucking op-ed about how horrible that was how horrible the jerry springers and the montels how terrible that was for the country and she came back the next season with a different set and basically phil donahue's old show she came back doing phil donahue's right. show that, it's kind of that yeah it's kind of yeah. that like no, she true. created yeah. these people of course yeah and now she's trying and and look, Jank is no dummy. I mean, he's a good businessman, obviously. Um, you know, maybe he does want the whole channel to go in that direction. And, you know, did she get permission from Jank to do that? Like again, I don't feel like she's faking this, but did she have a sit down with him and did he say, you know what, that's fine. Actually, I've been kind of wanting the channel to move more in that direction because I think all that shit is about to crash and burn and we want to get away from the blast radius. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that to me is what this is all an indication of. If there's a theme that's sort of, you know, one theme for this show, it's that. It's that th there's the sense that uh, a lot of people in their faction of this space have gotten a lot of things wrong. And um, not only have they encouraged them to get these things wrong, but they have insisted that they must uh, condemn anyone who took a different point of view. Right. Right. right? And Grifters. so now they're in a bit of a trap. Right. They got themselves into a little bit of a corner here. Anyway, here's the last clip that we're going to play. This 
is uh, Anna talking about how she's uncomfortable now talking to non-white people because she's afraid that she might accidentally say the wrong thing. Here we go. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm a little scared or he- like I'm afraid of like talking to people who are outside of my race because I don't know if I'm going to unintentionally step in it. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> like there's, yeah. there's, and I hate that. I hate that. Right. Like th- there's this, like, I don't know. It's like frigid I, because like if the, if all of the message is toward me and people who, you know, I'm Armenian, but still they call me white passing. So, you know, just got to go with that. Right. <laughs> if people who right. look like me are constantly told you are inherently racist. Okay, you are inherently a bad person. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's the start, and I had this debate with Jenk when it came to our rhetoric in regard to the other side, right? If the starting off point is you are trash and we think you're evil, then how, how, how does that, you're never going to move in a better direction. You're not gonna move the country in a better direction. You're not gonna improve race relations. You're gonna make it worse. And that is what I see happening. I think a lot of the division is due to the backlash to that kind of rhetoric. Okay, once again, this being a product of an environment that you helped nurture, right? right. And helped right. grow. You encouraged I mean, it. You, you, you encouraged you, you it, jumped man. out in front of that parade. They didn't create it, but they jumped out in front of it. Of they course. certainly championed it, pushed it. Right. Made it made, they could have gone in another direction. You know, they could have, well, they could have gone more in the Jimmy Dore direction. Like, hey, why are we getting caught up in all of this uh, corporate-driven DEI ESG bullshit? We want health care. You could have gone that way. You didn't. You chose not to. Right. You chose to make issues out of these identity politics matters, which attracts people who are out to one-up other people. See, this is the thing. The lib-adjacent left, right? which is what the sort of TYT channel has turned into. Um, They don't have any real political convictions at the end of the day. It's all one-upsmanship. It's all gamesmanship. And so how do you score points in that space? You score points by proving that you are woker than whoever's standing next to you. How do you do that? You call them out on a problematic thing that they said that they didn't intend that way right that's how you do it you cut them whoa what do you mean right right what was that what what was that you just let your prejudice slip out you just unmasked yourself by accident right um you you don't have to worry about that if you hang out with the right people we co-host a regular panel show with rbn i don't feel like i'm i'm russell and i in case you haven't noticed Couple white guys. I don't feel like I'm walking egg- on eggshells on that show. I'm I don't feel like, room. yeah, right. Exactly. I don't feel like, oh, if I say the wrong thing, CJ's going to jump down my throat. No, I mean, because- I mean, I do feel that way about China. On, on yeah, <laughs> but I mean, not in terms of like being called a racist. You don't feel no, that no, way. No, no. Like, I don't feel like, oh, if I say the wrong thing, they're going to jump down my throat because, aha, you just said something that we are going to deliberately misinterpret and, you know, to give you some, you know, ill ill motive. We're going to put this ill intent on you. No. But you know why those guys don't act like that? Those guys don't take that approach because they're serious, smart people right. with actual yes. left yes politics it's not that's a show. the key it's, it's not, not a, a show it's not a performance it's not a social club to them they have actual politics right whereas the crowd the tyt has cultivated they do not politics to them is proving to the person next to them that they're woker than the person two doors down or two people down that's all it is it's just a race to the top right of you know it's it's the woke olympics over there That's all it is there. That's all it is on Majority Report. All these channels, same thing. It's a leftist mafia. It's all about proving to each other how woke they are and how much woker they are than people who claim to be enlightened and woke and hip and, you know, quote unquote, real left. That's the game. It's a game. And that's why Anna feels she's walking on eggshells because she's hanging with the wrong crowd. But that's the crowd that she created. That's the audience that she has cultivated. Right. And it's also, as we were talking about with RBN on the last show and with Kit, um, we're like the third wave of political YouTube left shows. 
And we're not PMCs, man. We're, we're a lot more working class. We're a lot grittier. We're a lot closer to the issues that the PMCs might like to talk about, but are not personally impacted by. Has Anna ever not had health insurance? Like, has she ever really lived without health insurance? Has Cenk? I doubt it. I doubt they. I, I went 10 years without health insurance. Probably more, actually, without health insurance. I only wound up getting health insurance because my wife made me get it. I, I probably still wouldn't have it. Right. She's like, you know, you kind of need this. You know, like she made <laughs> me wear a bike helmet and it fucking saved my life later on. Right. You know, this is why married men live longer. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe get health insurance and a bike helmet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that politics is a politics you have to be very privileged to afford. If you can, the reason that I talk as much about these things as I do is because I know it's fucking killing us. I know it's killing us to be connected to those ideas. That's the point. It's not that I find it endlessly interesting to talk about fucking gender and transing kids. I would love to. I can't wait until this wheel really turns and I can never fucking read another thing about this, never talk about this again. But as I think Anna is coming to realize, we'll never get any of the economic things we want if we do not detach ourselves in the public mind from these people, from this faction. As long well, as they think that's us, they're not going to listen to what we have to say about unions and health care. Well, that's what I mean. I think the tide is turning. I think this is real think evidence so of too. that. It's I real evidence so of that. You know, so it, it's really not this is not a bad thing for the left. This is actually a very, very good thing. Right. Yes. Because you just yes. sense that, you know, uh, these arguments are starting to become settled. And once they become settled, then, you know, you can, uh, you know, at, at, at the very least, uh, know who's in and who's out. And then, you know, you just kind of go from there. Right. Um, but these things have to be settled first. And look, the fact that, look, she's right in the sense that there is just a lot of straw manning. There is just a lot of denying of the premises of the argument. Right. It's very hard to agree upon the premises of the debate when you have people who just jump to well you're you're a transphobe or you know you're you're a racist or you know and like whatever the sort of knee jerk reaction is that's what she's saying she's saying a lot of the elements of the left have become very knee jerk tyt they 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 their knee jerk is their game that, that's it i mean that's right. all they've engaged right. in is right. knee jerk reactions, right. you know, for almost, you know, the, the really almost the past, really the past decade now, almost, you know, that Bernie thing was, was, uh, the, the, the exception to them. That wasn't the rule. They saw an opportunity to really grow their audience and really capitalize off of this first Bernie campaign. And so yeah. they did it, but they haven't been the same even since they didn't even endorse Bernie Sanders until January of 2020. I remember primary. that. They yeah, were fence yeah. sitting. They were saying, "Well, it's right. great that Warren's in the race too, because now we have right. two progressives, right?" right? So, they're, like, they weren't even on the Bernie thing past 2016, save for like those six weeks, right, right between Iowa and Super Tuesday, right? And you know, the Bernie thing was a very mild incarnation of what this space ultimately became in certain corners of it, right? I mean, we're more well, red pilled well, than that now. Even you know, in our space, with so many of these shows, right? But they weren't even that far. They couldn't even they couldn't even commit to Bernie Sanders until six weeks before Super Tuesday right. in in the, right. in the 2020 cycle. So that whole thing, when we all jumped into, when we all subscribed to them and were hanging on their every word, that was like a year in right. the whatever it is, 15 year history of that project. Right. Right. You know, so that's one thing you also have to keep in mind. Like, what is the real TYT? TYT has had many incarnations over the years, right? From the right. YouTube and Howard Stern including, show. Including to, that, yeah, that, they right. started out Howard Stern. They right. jumped on this Bernie thing and revamped themselves as this politics channel. And yeah, look, I mean, again, Chank's a smart businessman. I'd be surprised if Anna said shit like this without telling him she was going to do it. I mean, maybe I'd be surprised. 
I'd well, they've kind surprised. of done it almost in lockstep. I mean, they've had certain disagreements. They have. They she have. mentioned she had certain disagreements with Jank as part of this interview. Mm. But, you know, Jank has been more or less, you know, on the same page as she has these past couple yeah, of months. Yeah, they as went indicated after him by, for speaking out on trans sports and this right. kind of thing. Positions they wouldn't have taken two years ago. I don't right. think. I mean, Jesus, what was it? Six months ago, he's talking about trans people need need guns. Right, that's what I mean. Like it's it was not a very that long quick ago. Pivot. It was a very quick pivot, indeed. Please clap. <laughs>